congratulating my noble friend Lord Carrington on his very well-judged maiden speech today. Uh, in this welcome debate, my own remarks will centre on Primados, an issue I raised with the noble Lord, Lord O'Shaughnessy, whilst he was a minister. And like the noble Lord, I would like to pay tribute to Mary Lyons, who chairs the Association for Children Damaged by Hormone Pregnancy Tests. Assiduously and tenaciously, she has fought for justice for those whom big pharmaceuticals have often treated with irresponsible contempt. She and her husband have travelled down from Wigan today and are watching our debate. Marie Lyon would like me to thank Baroness Cumberledge and the Independent Medicines and Medical Devices Safety Review for taking the campaigners seriously. She tells me this, and I quote, the sensitivity shown to our members by the review team is appreciated and commended. I really do feel that they and Baroness Cumberledge are committed to discovering the truth about the failures of the drug company and the government regulators and have a genuine desire to ensure that justice is served. I'd add my own thanks, my lords, to the noble Lord, Lord O'Shaughnessy for his role in encouraging the establishment of the independent review, and I would wholly endorse what he said earlier on about the desirability of creating a national office for patient safety. My own interest in Primados began in 2010 when a gentleman born with severe birth defects asked to see me at my university office in Liverpool. He believed that his disabilities were attributable to Primados, a hormone-based pregnancy test first marketed in the UK in 1959, produced by Shearing AG, who was subsequently taken over by Bayer AG. Withdrawn from sale in the United Kingdom in 1978, Tellingly, my lords, it was also used in South Korea to abort the child in the womb. Dr. Isabel Gall's 1960 research at Queen Mary Hospital for Children demonstrated a link between the drug and severe birth defects, and a review of the Committee on Safety of Medicines concluded that pregnant women should not use it. But subsequent court cases failed to provide a conclusive outcome, nor did a 2014 review by the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency. On October 26, 2010, I asked the government several questions. One was about the dosage of the constituents of Primados. One about, asked about any documents that the government held about its dangers, and I asked that they should be placed in the library. One was about the nature of the disabilities, one was about the help given to those affected. One requested ministers to meet the Association for Children Damaged by Hormone Pregnancy Tests. In his reply at the time, the noble Earl, Earl Howe, said that the regulatory agency has no information on the number of children who were born with disabilities, nor did it have evidence. But, my lords, if there was no evidence, why did they ban the drug? And as for meeting the victims, I quote, the MHRA therefore has no current plans to meet members of the Association for Children Damaged by Hormone Pregnancy Tests, people suspected to have been adversely affected by the drug Primados or with the pharmaceutical company Bayer. Well, despite further letters and questions, a 2017 report of an expert working group of the UK Commission on Human Medicines continued to state that there was no casual association. Yet in that same year, Sky News broadcast the secret drug scandal, which found that evidence of an association had been destroyed by a UK regulator in the 1970s. I asked the government for their response and quotes from the question whether they will consider establishing a public inquiry into the alleged failure of the regulator at that time to protect public safety. In another question, I asked whether they would examine why no toxicology or testing was undertaken prior to the drug Primados being licensed. I asked whether they were aware that Primados was being used as, a more, as an abortifacient in some parts of the world, whilst being sold in the UK for the purpose of pregnancy testing, and that there might have already been a collusion between the drug manufacturer and the regulatory bodies. In another, I asked why Primados had stayed on the market and no tests ordered by the Committee for the Safety of Medicines under the Medicines Act 1971. In another, I asked them to, quote, <coughs> meet with Mary Lyon and represents representatives of the Primados Victim Support Group. And in another, I asked why they were not funding research in Aberdeen and Cambridge, examining the likely effects on the child in the womb. Then in February 2018, 
The Right Honourable Jeremy Hunt, Member of Parliament, announced his welcome review to be led by the Noble Baroness Lady Cumberledge. I hope that when she comes to reply, the Noble Baroness, the Minister, Lady Blackwood, uh, will tell us when it's likely to report and who will be responsible, perhaps more importantly, for taking forward its recommendations. Among other things, as we heard from the Noble Baroness, the review will investigate any association between hormone pregnancy tests and their teratogenic effects and whether the regulatory bodies could and should have acted upon concerns sooner and, if they didn't, why didn't they? Meanwhile, my Lords, a team at Oxford, led by Professor Carl Hennigan, the scientist responsible for identifying thalidomide association, has discovered that pooled data shows, I quote, a clear association with several forms of malformation. And Professor Neil Vargason has carried out other work on zebrafish, which revealed anomalies which mirrored the adverse effects on victims of primados. Their studies were peer-reviewed and remain in the top percentile of scientific studies. In the House of Commons, the Prime Minister said, Ministers are aware of the new studies that have come out and it will be looked at very carefully, and I welcome that. But, my Lords, the raw data which Professor Hennigan needs to complete his review has not been made available. The All-Party Group on Hormone Pregnancy Tests, chaired by Yasmin Qureshi, Member of Parliament, and of which I'm a Vice Chairman, have sent a Freedom of Information request for the data, but to date have not received a response. Mrs Lyon has twice emailed the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, but has not received a response. I gave notice to the Noble Baroness, the Minister, of my intention of raising this question today, and my view that this is tardy and uncooperative on the part of that uh, body, and I hope that the Minister will be able to tell us whether more can be done to take that forward. My Lords, to end, severely disabled ch children cared for by family members, now in their late 70s, are increasingly becoming the responsibility of their siblings. While their health deteriorates, many battle every day to support themselves. Some have died, fighting to, end, uh, fighting to the very end to reveal the truth about the failures of the drugs company and the regulatory agencies. They have faced the implacable determination of regulatory bodies spending huge amounts of public money on ad hoc scientific reviews to cast doubt on the work of highly reputable scientists. My Lords, those who have suffered so grievously <coughs> deserve much, much better than this.